Last time on Pink Bike Academy, the remaining six riders were paired up into teams and competed in a challenge that tested their abilities to work together. Evan and Joe were the final team to complete the challenge, but it was Addison and Vlad who were sent home due to multiple rule violations. This time, the remaining riders will work closely with a Fox technician and compete in a challenge that requires them to work on their suspension as well as test it. And of course, there will be a racing component as well. It all happens right now on the Pink Bike Academy, presented by Shimano. We push the pedal to the floor. In this game, we always ready for more. Oh, you try to push me to my limit, but... Man, yeah, no Vlad! <laughs> Ooh, look at those stations. Oh, this looks high tech. This is the pistachio one. Oh my God. I feel super stoked that I'm in the final four. Um, yeah, it feels awesome. Super fun being in the final four for sure. First off, I wanted to start by saying congratulations to making it to the final four. There are only a few challenges left that stand between you and $25,000 plus a pro contract from Orbea Bikes. The atmosphere is really friendly right now, which is awesome. I feel like we are all really good friends. We all come from similar backgrounds. Yeah, I feel like it's good energy and I'm excited for the competition. Today is all about suspension. Darren from Fox is gonna run you through a basic fork service. And then you will need to do it on your own. Now, we could use the 38s on your bike, but Fox has kindly given us four brand new limited edition pistachio 38s. Judging you today will be Darren from Fox, of course, as well as Christina Chapetta, Fabian Cousinet. They will be paying attention to how well you listen during the demonstration and how well you perform the fork service. Darren has every right to ask you to perform the work again if he sees a mistake. After everyone has completed the first part of the challenge, we'll move up to the top of Big White Bike Park for the next part of the challenge. Let's get started. Tilt your fork in the stand, unscrew this. You have your high speed and low speed rebound adjusters here. Listen off so that these come off. Undo the fit nuts. Thread these on halfway. Unscrew these, tilt the fork back and catch oil in your oil pan. Slowly pull the lowers down. I think that knowing how your suspension works is super important to racing. And to understand the basics of how your suspension works, I think can provide a lot. Push this down to catch any old oil. Dust wiper, seal kit, seal driver, install it on the driver. I felt very comfortable taking my time and being nice and slow and being exact and being precise. The air spring side, just feed it under the dust wiper. Foam ring, pop it underneath. Slick oleum grease, a light film on the inside of the dust wiper. Just give the stanchions a quick wipe. Reinstall these just at a slight angle. Start to feed them on. I was more just going through, making sure the steps were done thoroughly because if you do something wrong, your fork's not gonna feel good or not work at all. So it's more about like being precise and making sure everything's done right. It's the coleum grease and just put a little bit on the inside. Thread that on by hand to start. 5.7 newton meters on the air side. For the damper side, 15 mil socket. Clean here. I've worked on my stuff a lot and I trust myself and it's awesome to be able, if something went wrong, you just have yourself to blame rather than someone else. Don't forget your rebound cover and you're ready to hit the trails. All right, let's give a round of applause to Darren for dropping that knowledge on us. You should now have everything you need to complete your fork service. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. It's, uh, it's pretty uh, technical, I'd say. It's not something that uh, your regular mountain biker would do. So pretty. Oh my gosh. This thing is sick. Curious, who's done this before? Me. Luckily, growing up, my dad's always kind of taught me mechanical stuff, and uh, we've always rebuilt our forks ourselves, so I've been lucky enough to do it before. I was definitely nice going into this challenge having previous experience and being 
comfortable with the tools and everything that way. It's a mm -hmm. good skill to have. Yeah. Now you guys have distracted me. Oh. <laughs> Let's go distract Ben a little bit. It's going too fast. What's going on here? Just gonna get this little O-ring in here. Yeah, first time properly servicing my suspension. Get this guy on first, and then I won't push it off. So it needs to go inside there. There we go. Are you sure of what you're doing? Fabian has definitely given me a little bit of a hard time on the suspension challenge. Well, if you look on this one, the O-ring's inside, right? kept like, just like being on my back and like asking me if I did things right. And everything I was doing was right. Maybe your seal is upside down. No, I know how to do it. I'm all good. I was like, oh God, like he's making me feel like I'm doing things wrong, but I, I wasn't. So it was actually pretty funny. No, I don't know how to get it off. Sweet. You know you can ask for help any time. No, I, I figured it out. I'm all good. Well, it's definitely important to have people to make sure that you're doing things right, and especially in such a hard challenge. Nice. Darren, I have a little bit of a question for you. What do you think about uh, the seal on, uh, on Ben Falk? Uh, those look like they're in upside down. Oh, crap. Yeah. <laughs> so. Take them back out, and I'll get you another set. Sweet, thank yeah. you. No, I know how to do it. I made a, one big mistake putting the seals in backwards, so that wasn't the greatest. Obviously, you never want to make mistakes, but uh, it's part of it, so yeah. Thank you, Fabian. Don't hesitate to ask help, I told you. We're not judging on the... Uh... Asking for help? Yeah. Well, I appreciate the help. No problem. I think I should have asked for a little bit more help, just making sure that things were right. But when Fabian called me out, I kind of got my crap together and it was good after that. There you go. Thank you, sir. This is very awkward. Doing good? Um, no? I'm not sure how to take these off, actually. Okay, so you want to get the this part right underneath as far as you can, like, press it in hard. Yeah. And then you got to just try and prise it out. Really? Oh my god, I've always really wanted to take apart a fork, but been a little too scared in case I um, did some damage or put it together backwards, which is very possible. I thought I was going to break it. No, no, you're good. Wow, okay, that's a lot more like force than <laughs> yeah, I expected. Yeah, for sure. I could feel my nervous energy kind of coming out, definitely. How do you know which side is the air and which side is the compression? I just look at it like it's on my bike. So, um, like this, it's like on my bike. So we have air on this side, compression on that side. All right. And I organize my notes with everything's in rights and lefts. Ooh, tidy. Yeah. I was definitely nervous building the fork. It's um, the steps all made sense. My notes are really easy to follow, but just handling the fork itself and physically doing it was very new. Darren, could I ask you a question, please? Yeah, sure. There almost doesn't seem to be enough space on this side to fit this guy in. So, see how these look different? Yeah. You got one in upside down. Oh, weird. That one's correct. Pop yeah, that one okay. back out and I'll get you a fresh one. Thank you. We call that pulling a bend. Ah, I know. The old upside down seal. I thought I was being so smart too. Look at that beautiful thing. Are you done, Evan? I am. I can't feel it. Can I see? You can. Oof. Supple, huh? Supple. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say it was too easy. It's like definitely there's stuff going on you don't want to mess up. Feels good. We'll ask Darren for the official opinion. Yeah. Very nicely done. Thank you. Hey, Darren, can I get a QC check? Evan is done here. I'm quite confident everything was done properly on my fork service. Looks good. One sack ring, dust covers on. That looks good. The elimination yesterday definitely showed that there was more to it than time. No matter what, I wouldn't have been focused more on time than quality on something like a fork rebuild. Yeah, good job. Beauty. See, see it's good. Sweet. Awesome. Time to take it for a ride. Yeah. Yeah, sick. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like a new fork. Ben, you done? Yep. Hey, Darren, can we get a QC check on Ben's fork? All right. 
Looks good. You got your repaint cover on. Looks good. Crush washers and one sag ring. <laughs> yeah, that looks good. Well done. Sweet. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Well done, Ben. I thought it definitely went all right, especially since I'd never done it before. But yeah, it was, I, was, I would say I was pretty efficient still. Okay, there we go. Once you hear the click. You're good to go. My strategy for the suspension challenge was to be thorough and to follow Darren's instructions exactly. Well, you might get Darren over here to double check. Oh. I'm an academic, I've spent a lot of time in school and I love lists and I love numbers and I like step-by-step -step things. Hey Darren, can we take a look at this washer? Oh, what's going on there? My strategy was just to be very precise with all of my notes, to be exact and to repeat it step for step exactly like Darren had said. It looks like you've maybe over tightened this. I would take it off and we'll get you a new crush washer and check that. Uh, Fit not. Okay. Yes. Thanks, Darren. No problem. It was easy for me to follow the instructions. I am a very type A personality. <laughs> I think we're pretty spick and span here. Okay. One sag ring. That's good. Rebound covers on. Crush washers. My biggest takeaway from this week is that I actually love it. Um, and even though it's intimidating and it makes me super nervous. I'm really excited to learn. Just a little bit of excess oil in there, okay. like just sitting in the bottom. If you leave it like that, it might run down and contaminate your brake. Breaks. So okay. you want to give it a real good clean. But otherwise, it's good. Just like with your chain, any extra oil you're leaving on there is just something for the dirt to stick to later. I actually really hope that I can go to races or events self-sufficient, and I also hope that I can help clients who I coach to work on their bikes as well. That's a huge dream of mine. This is the most rewarding stuff where you're like, ooh, Angie. Good work, Angie. Okay. All right, QC check, please. Wipers are good. Got one sag ring. Looks good, let's check your rebound. It turns. <laughs> With anything, the first time you do something, it is a pretty huge risk, I think, to assume that it is race ready and ready to go. I'd say I was like 80 to 90% confident that it was race ready. Yep, that looks good. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> Done. Thank you. All right, amazing job, contestants. It's obviously a very technical challenge. Lots of little bits to remember, different weights of oil. Darren, thank you once again for guiding them through it. Let's put these things on your bikes. Let's head into the bike park and yeah. start part two of the challenge. Sick. Yo! Yesterday was a day off for all the riders and we went and rode Big White Bike Park and I took a pretty big tumble in the middle of the day and I scratched my shoulder, my abdomen, my wrists. Um, I broke my full face and I, I have a few scratches along my chin as well too. <sighs> yeah, just loosen up. I'm nervous for that rock shoot. I was pretty sore and definitely uh, not feeling in the best riding shape. So I tried to get back out there and just embrace mountain biking again. Oh, Lordy. Breathe. We get to practice, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Just a practice run. For part two of today's challenge, we'll be simulating a real world high level race scenario by giving the riders the opportunity to practice a racetrack and then work with Darren from Fox on their suspension settings before dropping in for a timed run. We could maybe speed up your low speed rebound. Sure, yeah. Just help it to rebound more quickly and set you up for the next feature. Sweet. This process is often reserved for top level athletes and it will be important to take full advantage of Darren's experience. Make this one click on the low speed. So. Okay, thanks for your help, Darren. So I was thinking maybe add like a low speed or something? I would try that. Cool. Yeah. Thanks, man. I spent all week fiddling with all these dials, and this is definitely the best it's been so far. So yeah. this is sick. Our panel of judges will be looking at the rider's ability to translate their on-trail suspension feel to Darren, and of course, their race time. You guys ready to get racing? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. You. Headspace is something that I have control of. I can choose how I want to respond to a racetrack, and I chose to try to take it as something that I had to overcome, and that's something that I had to move past to be able to be successful. I also 
try to just focus on only three features on the trail and try to nail those three features. Right at the very start, there was a really janky right-hand corner into an off-camber rock roll that you had to take really slow and wide to even get into the rock roll. So I wanted to focus on that one. No! Yeah, Angie! Good girl, keep it up. Yeah, keep it up. There was this narrow part of the single track after you get into the forest where there's a high line on the left, like a high grass line, that puts you into a left-hand corner at a better angle, so you're able to carry speed out of the corner a lot better. And then the last feature was the rock shoot. I wanted to make sure that I approached that one with confidence and with a strong body position to come out of it strong and to finish the track strong. It's hard not to let something like that get into your head, but I'm, I feel like I, I did it. Woo, you're done. <laughs> Athletic. Woo. I do perform the best under pressure. And so, yeah, maybe it is a good thing. Maybe it has uh, been able to push me further in this competition. So excited to race today. It was so sick to get back on the clock and actually get to a shred. The track today was super sick, like such a good racetrack, super fun to ride, but yeah, so rough, so physical, and just like full on for like a minute. So yeah, it was pretty fun, but uh, super hard. My mistakes were definitely just missing a few lines, a few lines that help you set up for corners and help you like round things out. In enduro racing, normally stages are so long that it doesn't really matter if you miss one or two lines, but today was so short that uh, it definitely made an impact. Yeah, Ben. Damn it. What happened? Uh, I just missed a couple of important lines. Yeah, I just missed a few. Uh, few high lines that like set you up really nice. I don't think my time would be too bad. It was still decent, but I just, I think I lost a few seconds in a few spots and uh, it definitely adds up on a, such a short track. You think it's enough to beat Evan? I don't know. I didn't, it was a bit too sloppy, I think. You never know though. We'll see. Oh man, we've all just been like waiting to race. The energy is high and we were all frothing for it today. Going to the 38 is insane and definitely the best suspension setup I've felt on a bike so far. Definitely funnest day so far for me. You have it. Woo! Oh yeah! Woo! How'd she go? Oh my God, that's fun. <sighs> what a track. Time-wise today, I'm pretty stoked with how it went. Dropped in, felt fast off the bat, and didn't really have any bobbles, so I'm stoked with how it went. Suspension yeah. felt good? Suspension's amazing. Yeah? Not even to try to like sell it out, like, <laughs> it's game-changing. I was super excited to race today. It's kind of what we've been here for. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, girl. Looking yeah, good. Awesome. Come on. Hi -hi. Finally getting used to the bike. So I feel like I'm ready to get some energy out. The suspension allows you to track in a straight line. 
allows you to corner really hard. The geotes, you don't sort of dive into your fork. You're very supported, so you can just continue like moving through rough sections. Battles! Oh, Joe, Larry. Yeah, Joe! Look ahead! Look at that corner! Woo! Oh! oh, my bike is perfect! I was super excited when I finished the lap. I like. Yeah, it was one of those moments where you just like feel so content and, and happy and like you got everything out of the bike and the ride that you want. <sighs> She's a good girl. Holy. <laughs> <laughs> My bike is definitely a good girl. <laughs> so fun. The pistachio is looking like a campfire pistachio now. Yeah, I got a little roasted. All right. Another full-on day. We began things with a suspension service and tutorial. Darren, thank you for being here and teaching our riders. Yep, glad to be here. Did they impress you or, or what? Yeah, for the most part. There was a few mistakes here and there, but overall, like I was just impressed. Evan was the only one who went through the rebuild effortlessly and did everything correctly. So everybody else had some major issues, I would say. Um, installing the seals upside down, installing the fork lowers backwards. Those are big issues. Um, Angie did really well during the fork challenge. However, the little mistake that she made, she crushed the crush washer. Not the biggest thing ever, but it's a pain in the butt when that is the final thing that you have to do. Pretty crucial. Fabian, I want to throw it to you. I saw you out there chirping all the contestants this morning during the rebuild. I don't know if they cracked under pressure, but you know, who made those mistakes in your eyes? They all did pretty well, but I have to say, Ben, I point him like, hey, are you sure this is okay? Are you sure? And seals the wrong way, hammer down, smash, <laughs> smash the seal, and uh, it's more about the attitude of being too confident. Um, Christina, I want to jump into the race. What did you see out there? Joe actually had some really good lines in there. I was quite proud of her in that way, that she skipped the drops. She instead was pumping down the transition of where the drops would be, and she looked super smooth. So for Angie, we saw her, she was pretty tense, and she was visibly slower than Joe. She picked some not efficient line, ate a couple of rocks, and uh, clearly was super tense. So. I think her crush must have played a role in that. She didn't get over it, I think. Ben came across the finish line visibly disappointed, shaking his head, took his goggles off. He knew, he kind of blew it. Ben and Evan were pretty uh, similar in terms of speed. Boss picked a very good line, so it seems like maybe Ben Competitor spirit like pushed him to make some mistake, and it uh, seems like uh, Evan kept it together, chill, like uh, steady, and uh, yeah, Ben uh, got beaten. So we have two riders pretty clearly in the bottom today. Do we know which one would go home? I think we, I think we all know. I think we've got an answer. Today was definitely the most technical challenge yet. We don't expect you to be pro suspension gurus, but everything we did today is a part of being a pro athlete. That being said, Ben, Angie, please take a step forward. Ben, you rushed through the fork service, and unfortunately, you missed a few of those lines out on track today. Definitely a little bit worried about the elimination. I just made a few crucial mistakes and in like a really short track, one little mistake costs a lot. Angie, you made a couple of minor mistakes during the fork service and it seemed like on track you were a little off the back as well. I have no regrets in how I performed and I feel like it's been an awesome journey and I really hope that it continues. Ben? Angie, luckily for you, the judges took a look at the results and decided that today, there will be no elimination. You are both safe. However, the results from today do carry forward. So keep that in mind for the next challenge. Good job today, guys. In a shocking turn of events, the final four contestants were saved from elimination. 
but their performances today will be counted going forward. Who will win the $25,000 plus a pro contract from Orbea Bikes? It's anyone's guess right now. Catch all the action next time on the Pink Bike Academy, presented by Shimano. Today, we're testing your creativity and ability to create video content. We want you to create a 60 second video using your GoPros here at Big White. Yeah. <laughs> uh oh. We brought back your former contestants and all watched the videos. I feel like I never left. Time ticket, time ticket.